What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, February 13th. Well, Palantir stock here on Monday, finishing the day up 67 cents a share, 2.75%, fading here a little bit after hours, down maybe about another 30 cents or so. However, listen, as always, after hours movement, I mean, look at the volume. You have to take it with a grain of salt, whether it's in your favor or goes against your current sentiment. The volume is simply too low. Okay. Now let's take a zoomed in look here at the one minute. And you can see that this first third of the day is really what I'm most interested in as far as intraday opportunity goes. So let's take a look here. First of all, if you guys appreciate me covering Palantir each and every day and you enjoy these videos, get value out of them, please subscribe to the channel. Our uh, goal is a thousand here within the next like week and a half or two weeks or so. And I think we can certainly do it with, with your help here. So I appreciate it. Let's move on now. So looking intraday, you saw this little rejection setup that certainly formed in the first 30, 35 minutes of the trading day. Listen, are there a lot of scalpers that probably took this? Yeah, probably. For me, this is far too sloppy. I don't think there's edge here. Okay. I think a lot of traders would have mistaken this for edge because they don't have the data to back it up. But listen, for me, for this particular setup, I have found over a long time and a lot of data that these sloppy rejections here, you end up usually taking on a bit of heat in the trade. And I have found that that usually sucks up this channel, causes hesitation down here on the rejection, flips that edge negative. Nothing for me intraday here on Palantir. But let's now, but again, intraday is a completely different story from the longer term view of the, of the name. So let's take a look at the volume now on the five minute, try to get some bias confirmation, okay? So clearly the biggest move upside was this pump here between about 10.50 Eastern to about 11.30 Eastern. And again, what we're looking for from, from a bullish perspective would be a big volume shift to the upside here, okay? And then a fade in volume as we consolidate and fade off lower. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we saw the big volume increase, right? It's incredibly obvious here. And then you see a fade in volume. You see a little bit of pop in volume, but nowhere near what we saw in the upside move. You know, this is at least up until 1.30, 2 p.m. Eastern time. You know, the, the, my charts are, of course, central time. But up until that point, this is pretty, pretty biased to the upside. Now, granted, as we headed into the close, we saw two smaller red candles okay and we saw an increase in volume that happened to be red because the bears happened to just kind of eke out a win on those candles but for me these candles aren't definitive enough like if we saw this increase in volume here back here you know like a really big pop midday on these bigger red candles like four in a row for me that would be a lot more definitive but we're seeing the closing candles which we already expect increased volume and they were not uh, drastically red in any way. Okay, let's move on now and get more of a uh, contextual view of the day-to-day -day levels to watch here on Palantir, the self-fulfilling prophecy psychological areas on each specific chart, starting with the 30-minute. Of course, that 50 period, which is that white line, is incredibly relevant as of right now because we're kind of right on top of it. That level is currently sitting right at about 2445 and the stock's right at about 2474 here in the after hours. I mean, we're talking about a 1% move approximately downside to make a test of that 50 period here on the 30 minutes. So here's what I'm looking for. If I'm a bull looking at the stock tomorrow, Tuesday, if we see a retest of the 50 period, it's really easy. I just want to see a hold of support. Okay, that's that's all I need to see here on the 30 minute chart. It's really not much more complicated than that. Just a psychological um, confirmation to turn this into a potential self-fulfilling prophecy in the next couple of days. If I'm a bear, same deal, but I just want to see a downside break. And it's well within range of a single day move, obviously, being 1%. I mean, today was up 2.75%. Really simple here on the 30 minute. And now let's take a look here at the four hour. You can see, again, it's going to take some time for these levels, that 50 period and the 200 period, to move upside. Okay. On the four hour, you know, that, that 50 period has just recently today gotten above 20 bucks a share. That's good. We talked about that in the recent uh, video over the weekend. Okay, ideally, I'd like to see that pop up above 20. It has done so. It's making 
a relatively swift move upside, but again, it's going to take time, currently sitting about 18, 18.5% downside. Since there's not a whole heck of a lot that's immediately relevant on Palantir on the 4-hour chart, what I'm watching here from a bullish perspective, just continue to get that 50 period up as quickly as possible, get feet underneath the recent move. Because um, what the bears really, the psychology of the bears, they want those moving averages staying as low as possible, as long as possible, to kind of make the argument that the stock, oh, on the four hour, the Palantir is kind of trading on thin air, needs to correct, okay? Bulls, you just want any argument of, of that nature just out the window, which requires one of those huge, big, uh, very commonly watched levels like the 50 period, uh, just to move upside to, to throw that out the window. All right, now the most important chart of all, again, if you're going to watch any part, I think this is probably the uh, most crucial uh, chart on any security, of course, but we need to be watching all of them. Never just watch one time frame, in my opinion. Uh, it's a foolish way to trade. It's a very lazy way to trade, in my, and lazy traders, um, they typically don't get very far. So looking here, you know, we closed at 25.05, faded back below the, the daily chart here. We're not going to see after hours. So currently the stock's at around 24.74, okay? And listen, again, after hours, take it with a grain of salt. We closed above 25. So moving into tomorrow here on Palantir, this is what I'm looking at. If I'm a bull, I just want to see 25 hold for as long as possible intraday, ideally closing above 25 yet again. Reclaiming that from what we've now lost in the after hours, again, take it with a grain of salt, low volume. But if I'm a bull, that's my only concern. All right, move upside, away from 25 to the upside, or you know what, even trade sideways, I don't care, just reclaim 25. It's a huge psychological level, and these psychological levels, they take time to show comfort uh, trading above, and, and that's okay. You know, if I'm a bear, though, I need to fade away from 25 as hard as possible back down toward that 23 uh, dollar share technical level ASAP. Okay. 25 is your enemy if you're a bear. Simple as that. Now, implied volatility here. Again, we saw that big fade post earnings. It's starting to creep back upside a little bit, but really it's sitting kind of in the middle of that range compared to the last, I don't know, six to eight months or so here on Palantir. When IV's in the sort of the middle of a range, you know, it's kind of no man's land in a lot of ways. If you're buying options, ideally, you know, you still have to be directionally correct, but you want to buy when IV is, is as low as possible, ideally. Uh, if you're selling, the opposite is true. You kind of want IV to be as high as possible. When it's in the middle, you know, you pay attention to it. You don't just ignore it by any means. You pay attention to it and understand where that falls within your risk parameters. You know, whether you currently own options, you're currently short options, okay? You're looking to buy or you're looking to sell. All right, let's take a look at the options bias. Let's see what the traders are thinking as we head into tomorrow. This is all today's data. 734,000 contracts traded today, good sample size. 498,000 of those were calls. 236,000 of those were puts, so heavy bullish bias here on Palantir today. Short term, the short term speculation, right? That's 0 to 20 delta right here. 122,000 calls, 94,000 puts, slight bullish bias there as well. And the mid to long term bias, those in the money, the 61 to 80 delta contracts, and the deep in the money, the 81 to 100 delta contracts, both leaning heavily, heavily bullish. Look at those numbers. Okay, 49,000 calls in the 61 to 80 versus less than 5,000 puts. And in the 81 to 100 delta range, 40,000 calls compared to less than 1,000 total puts. So we're seeing bullish bias overall, short term, mid term and long-term today here on Palantir. As always around here, risk management is number one. I want to see you guys stay in the game. Staying in the game, being able to trade is the key here. Um, you, you don't want to get knocked out. That, that makes you unable to gain the experience necessary uh, to really make this happen here. Listen, if you guys want to come trade with us every single day, take a look at that first link in the pinned comment. Price goes up over time but you can get grandfathered in at the current rate. Scalp setup alerts, my personal scalp setup alerts every single trading day. Swing trade setup alerts, human verified unusual options activity, and platinum one-on-one -on -one coaching. Hope to see you join, and I'll see you in the next one.